Hey guys, uh, I'm making a video here showing the components of a computer build that I did for under $800. Now this video is just going to be going over the components I used because most of these boxes are empty because I've already built the computer. But I'm just going to show you guys the components I use so you can build a computer for under $800. That'll be a nice little gaming rig. Now keep in mind you can either upgrade or downgrade the components depending on your needs. So we'll start with the CPU. For my build, I used an FX6350, which is a nice 6-core processor from AMD, very similar to the FX6300, uh, the main difference being it's got a factory overclock, so it's at 3.9 GHz. Uh, another noticeable difference is the FX6300 has a TDP of 95 watts, while this one has a TDP of 125 watts, so it will run hotter, and that is why I'm going to be using an aftermarket cooler. Now I say using because I tried using the stock cooler and while I worked it kept it cool, it's noisy and driving me nuts. So I'm going to go with this, it's a Zalman, it was like a $20 aftermarket cooler so we'll see how that goes and hopefully it'll run quieter. And so far it looks pretty nice, I mean we'll just pop this open. It's got a couple of copper pipes three of them, so we'll see if it transfers the heat well. It's got a nice fan on it, and it'll help uh, blow air out the back of the case, so hopefully it'll work better than the stock cooler, but we'll see about that. So that's that. All right, so we've done the CPU, the aftermarket cooler, the hard drive. Now, for all the prices on these components, I'll have them listed in the video in the description, so I'm not going to go over them here. This is a 2 terabyte Western Digital hard drive, nice known company. I like to use a well-known company for my hard drive because the operating system is so darn expensive and the information you put on the hard drive, you do not want to lose just because you, che you went cheap on the hard drive. But 2 terabytes, that's going to be more than plenty for most people's needs. I could have gone with the 1 terabyte, but this was like $5 more. So I was like, why not $5 for an extra terabyte? I'll do it. So there's the hard drive. Not a whole lot to say about that. Windows operating system. Uh, yeah, Windows 7. Not a Windows 8 guy. I tried it. Didn't really like Windows 8. But uh, it depends on the person. Some people like Windows 8. I like Windows 7. It's simple. I understand it. And I don't like the tablet-like interface of Windows 8. So I stuck with Windows 7. But that's up to your personal preference. The RAM. I went with Ballistics RAM. See the empty case? It's already in the computer. But 8 gigabytes of RAM, that's going to be more than enough for most people's needs. You could do 16 gigabytes, but just for, if you're just using it for gaming like I am, I really don't see the point in using 16 gigabytes. With the configuration I've set up for my computer, uh, yeah, there is no need for 16 gigabytes. So I went with 8 gigabytes, and that'll be more than enough for my needs. And the reason I went with Ballistics RAM, it was the cheapest RAM I could find that was at 1600 megahertz, so it's got a nice high clock speed. Not the highest, but certainly faster than 1333. And most of these brands are going to be decent RAM. I don't know of any uh, RAM manufacturers that people t generally don't trust. Just depends on your personal preference, and I have no personal preference, so I went with ballistics. Now the GeForce 6 60X. The GeForce GTX 660 is what I chose for my graphics card. I am an NVIDIA guy. You may be an AMD guy. You may not care. doesn't really matter. My first graphic card was a GT430 from Galaxy, so I like Galaxy, so I stuck with them. And the GTX 660 is going to be a nice graphics card for gaming. You're going to be able to play most of your games on pretty high settings, if not maxed out, for most of them. And as time goes on, it'll be a very relevant card, and you can even put it in SLI configuration with another one of these if the times get to the point where this is no longer powerful enough for your needs. So it is an, will make an upgradable machine because you can put another one of these in your computer. Now in order to put another one of these in your computer, you're going to have to have a good PSU. Now this is only a 600 watt PSU, so I might be able to put in another GTX 660. Probably not, but you might be able to. I'd have to look into that to be really sure, but for my computer build I have no intention of putting another one in. So I just went with a 600 watt PSU, which is more than enough for this computer build. And the reason I chose this Corsair uh, PSU 
is because I know it's a good brand, it's got a lot of good reviews, and that's something you really have to look at with these PSUs. You don't want to buy that 750 watt PSU from that no-name manufacturer that only costs like 30 bucks. Because even though it may say 750 watts, doesn't mean it's actually going to be able to handle 750 watts. And those uh, PSUs, they tend to be cheap, not just in price, but in the way they're manufactured. And if you're putting in like a nice CPU, you're putting in a good motherboard, you're putting in RAM that you actually like, you're putting in a nice hard drive, you're building a computer that you really love, do not put in a cheap PSU. Because if you put in a, a really bad PSU that doesn't have a lot of uh, voltage regulation on it and it gets a lot of fluctuations, you may end up frying your components. And that would be very expensive, a lot more than the cost to just get a decent PSU. Now the thing you want to look at on a PSU is, number one, is it 80 plus certified? It doesn't have to be to be a good PSU, but it really should be because that just shows the efficiency of it. So you want either 80 plus or 80 bronze or 80 gold or 80 silver, I believe. I think they even have an 80 platinum, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And then when you're looking at these PSUs, the thing you want to look at is the different rails they have. Now I'm going to try and get in on this, and let's see if we can see those. See those numbers there? Now those are going to be your different rails. So you've got your 3.3 volt rail, your 5 volt rail, 12 volt rail, negative 12 volt rail, and then this last one, I have no idea what it is. But anyways, the one you really want to look at is this 12 volt rail. Now this one's got 46 amps on it, and it's got 552 watts. So that's the important number for this case, because what you're going to want is that 12 volt rail, because that's where the power for your graphics card is going to come from. I believe for your motherboard as well, so your CPU. And so that's where all your wattage is basically supposed to be focused, because that's going to be the energy intensive components of your computer. So if it's got a lot of volt amps on your 3.3 volt rail and a lot of amps on your 5 volt rail but not a lot on your 12 volt rail, that's a good sign that the PSU is not the one that you're looking for. So I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to get a quality PSU. You get a crappy PSU, destroys your computer. It's going to be a lot more expensive to fix it than it would be to just get a decent PSU. Motherboard. I do not know much about motherboards. This is an AM3 Plus uh, socket motherboard, so it worked for my computer build. It's got the right TDP rating, so it can handle the FX6350, and it's working pretty nicely so far. Uh, it's got four slots for your RAM, so I've got two slots of them taken up for eight gigabytes. So if in the future I ever did need that 16 gigabytes, I could just stick two more RAM slots in, or two more RAM modules into the slots. And yeah, so I like this motherboard. Uh, not much else to say about that, didn't really look much into it. Didn't have any problem playing the FX6350 and BIOS recognized it, so that was very convenient. And overall, good motherboard so far. Okay, this is an optional thing. This is going to be a media reader, so you can put in your, uh, maybe your digital cameras, uh, what are those things called? The little memory modules for your, mem your little memory. The low memory modules for your uh, either your camcorder or your camera. And so it's just going to be, oh, memory card reader. There we go. So your memory cards will be able to be read through this. It's got a USB port. And for 20 bucks, I thought it was worth it. And yeah, it's going to be a nice little addition to a computer. Like I said, it's not necessary, but it's something I want for my computer built. So I bought it, and I'm going to put it in. Have yet to do so though. And now for the last component of my computer build. And this is the most visual component of your computer build. Your uh, case. So this case, I have nothing terribly special to say about it. It's not a hundred dollar case. It's not going to be something that every gamer out there is going to testify by and stand by. But it's a case that I like because number one, it was affordable. With shipping, it came out to like less than $50. And it looks nice. I mean, it's big. It's a mid-ATX case. So it's not like your standard one that you buy at Walmart. It's bigger. But from the front, it just looks like a nice, clean, sleek computer, which is what I wanted. And on the side, it's got a nice uh, plastic cover. Yeah, I said plastic. It's not glass or anything, not plexiglass. 
But anyways, you can see the components on the inside. And with my amazing cable management skills, it looks mediocre at best. But I still like having the ability to see my components on the inside, and maybe I'll fix it up later. But yeah, it's a good case so far. Uh, it's pretty sturdy. The only thing that I have a little bit of an issue with and that I've heard reviewers say about is this front vent here is supposed to allow air in. And so I put a fan up front to draw, try and draw more air into it. But a lot of the reviews said that with this case enclosure and the front closed, it had trouble bringing air into the case. So far, I haven't had much an issue with it. Like I said, I just put a little fan in there to help it out. But if you open the case front, you'll be able to see that it'll draw in air pretty nicely. It's got an air filter in the front. So it's overall, it's a nice case. And I believe without shipping, it goes like $35 or something. So it's not an expensive case, which I liked. I wasn't looking to spend a fortune on a case, and it's a nice, aesthetically pleasing case. And it's got these vents on the side where you can stick another fan on. So overall, if you were to buy this case, you'd be able to get some nice air ventilation going through. And I don't think you'd be disappointed with the build quality of it. So this is the case I chose, and it worked out nicely. Now those are all the components that uh, I used for my computer build, and as I said earlier, I'm not going to be showing you guys in this video the build of it in any way. But if you want to see later in my other videos I'm going to be uploading in the next week or so, I'm going to be reinstalling a new CPU cooler. So I'm just going to show you guys how to install the FX6350, it's really easy. And then I'll just be showing you guys how to actually remove thermal compound because I have to get that old uh, compound off the old cooler and the CPU so I can put it in the new cooler. And then I'll be showing you guys how to install the RAM modules. Really easy if you guys don't know how to do it, but I'll be showing you guys anyways just because it'll take literally like 30 seconds. And I'll probably be showing you guys how to install this little guy. Considering he has one cable, it's going to be a pretty short video. So I'll probably also be showing you guys how to install your either the DVD-ROM drive or the hard drive just because it'll take like another minute or so and it'll be an informative video if you don't know how to do it. I learned how to do it while building this computer and I was surprised how easy it was so I want to show you guys how to do it if you don't know how to already. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please like or subscribe or both. That would be wonderful. And I thank you for watching this video and I hope it helped. You guys have a good day.